Hey, it's Red Lace, and today I'm going to show you the five different farm types available in Stardew Valley 1.1. I'm currently playing the beta, which is available on Steam, and uh, you can see that I'm creating a new character, so a new game, and everything looks the same except from the right-hand side you'll see five little house icons which indicate the farm types. So there's the standard farm, a simple plot of land with a large amount of open space to design your farm. And I'm not going to go over that one because that's the one that's been in the game so far, so we've seen it plenty. The new one is Riverland Farm. Your farm is spread across several islands and scenic riverbanks. Fish are more common here than usual. The third one is the Forest Farm. The woods limit your farming space, however the bounty of the forest is nearly at your doorstep. The next one is the Hilltop Farm. Rocky terrain and a winding river make it difficult to design your farm. However, a mineral deposit provides mining opportunities, which could be pretty useful for someone that doesn't want to go into caves. Wilderness Farm? There's plenty of good land here, but beware, at night the monsters come out. And uh, that can make it pretty difficult for some people that don't like to fight uh, in the game, so you may want to keep that in mind. So each of the new farm types come with a different decorated interior of your house. And uh, we're starting here with the Riverland Farm, so it's kind of got a nautical theme. And uh, each house you start in will also have a new gift box with 15 parsnip seeds to get you started for Mayor Lewis. So when you come out of your house, you'll notice things look slightly different. Your house still looks pretty much the same as you can expect from before. different things going on here, like there's stone up top in this little nook. There's water everywhere because it is the Riverland farm. So normally there'd be trees up here. Instead there's a bridge up to the mountains and water surrounding everything. You still have access to your mushroom or fruit bat cave here, and it looks the same inside no matter what farm you choose. Clear out some of this rubbish. <laughs> And uh, then we have a little bridge over here, past the greenhouse, and this is where Grandpa's Shrine is located, so he's got his own little island. And if we head back towards the greenhouse, let's just continue exploring the rest of the farm to see what's up here. So if we head down, we have another little bridge connecting to another island. And this island's very, fairly small, but it is all farmland, so that's good, because you could plant anything you wanted here. Let me go to this side, and the little bridge connects it. Another fairly small island, a little more awkward in shape, may not be quite as useful, but may be good for animals or something. If we go down another bridge, there's another small plot of land. This one has a little grass on it, so it's not completely useful for crops, but it is useful, and um, you can't go down any further from here. You can see it's surrounded by water. So if we cross with this bridge and head over to this island, this is kind of your central island, and it's actually quite a bit larger than some of the others. So it'd be a good spot to actually do your crops if that's what you're going for, or if you're doing farm animals, so you could do all of them there. Uh, there's a small island down here, and this leads down to the forest and Marnie's. And if we head back up, I'll show you how big this island in the middle here is. Again, it's all surrounded by water, so if you're going to focus on fishing, this is definitely the farm for you, because you could sit here and fish all day. And uh, there's another little island over here, and it's got a cute little, a little um, boardwalk for you to fish off of if you wanted to do that. And then we head back up to where we started. And we're back at the farmhouse. And um, as you can see, the mailbox and the shipping container have not moved. They're in the same spot no matter what farm type you choose. The forest farm has a pretty cute interior. It's actually my favorite. And um, I'm going to leave that gift box and I'm going to head outside. And you'll see there's a lot more grass on the forest farm. And the top now, instead of being water, it's filled with trees and forest. Similar to the Secret Woods, so you'll notice some similarities there. There's a lot of grass, though, so there's a lot of area that you're not able to farm. So it is difficult in that regard. That path will take you up to the mountains in Robin's Carpenter Shop. Your mushroom or fruit bat caves over here. 
And you'll notice Grandpa Shrine's over here on the left, and there's bushes blocking the way, but you can actually come down here and walk right through, and then go up, and you can access his shrine. Which is kind of neat. It's like nestled in a little forest area, so that's pretty cool. We're going to head back towards the greenhouse, and you'll see there's big wooden stumps here, and I'm assuming these are going to be hardwood that maybe regenerate. Um, during the game, but it's hard to say this early uh, because I haven't been able to chop them down yet because I don't have upgraded tools, but it kind of looks that way, so that could be a pretty cool feature if they actually do become hardwood that you have a, a re renewable source of, similar to the Secret Woods, without having to go to the Secret Woods every day. So this area is probably their biggest plot of farmable land uh, down here, and there's a little pond here and then a pathway down to Cindersat Forest and Marnie's. And this pathway, uh, or this area, is actually really great for growing crops and so forth. And then this side has some more greenery, another pond that's a fairly decent size, a little more grass, another small pond up top, and then it loops back up to the top area where there's plenty of trees you could grow here in the grassy area. This one is the Hilltop Farm, and the Hilltop Farm kind of has a miner's theme, so you'll notice some pickaxes on the wall, stone walls, and a gem. And um, <laughs> if you come outside, it actually is a pretty neat farm. This is probably my second favorite of all of them. Um, I think it's pretty cool. It uh, has a lot of vertical aspects to it, and that there's pathways going up and down like you were on a hilltop. <laughs> and um, it has some pretty good usable areas to farm, uh, but however, because of the up and down factors, it does make it a little more difficult to have big open spaces of farmland, so you'll need to get a little more creative in designing your farm on this one. So your greenhouse has some areas on both sides to farm. And then if we come down these stairs, there's a really skinny little patch of area here that opens up a little deeper here on this side that you could probably use for some main crops and so forth over here. This is probably one of your your bigger areas after you clean it out. Uh, clearly there's a lot of rubbish here right now, but um, if you cleaned it out you'd have a pretty good area to farm. And there's this little patch up here, which maybe you could use for barn animals or something. Then you have another skinny little patch down here, and it connects back up to the big area. And then we have a bridge that we can cross, and this is also another large area of farmable land. It has some grass towards the bottom, but um, it also has the pathway down to Cindersat Forest and Marnie's right here. So if we keep walking to the left, the uh, farmable area continues, and there's another little pond over here. It's pretty small, but a good source of water for crops, so this would be a good area to grow crops as well. And if you come up here, you actually have a little mineral deposit area, so you can get geodes uh, on your own property really easily, and ore, which you weren't able to do before. So this is pretty valuable if someone wants to use ore very early and kind of focus on that, the mountain um, provides all this stuff up at the, the mountain mines, but now your hilltop farm has it too. So I'm not sure if those ores are going to change as you play. I'm not, I'm not sure on that yet. As you progress, maybe, you know, gold will start showing up or silver, and then, you know, we all hope <laughs> iridium, but um, I'm not sure if that's the case or not yet. So if we head over here, you'll see this little bridge, and it takes you over to a little piece of land, and then Grandpa Shrine is up on a hill all by itself. So he's got his nice little corner all marked out for him. And uh, that's kind of cool, a little feature that it's kind of on a pedestal up there for him, and there's a little bit of land down here you could do something with. So that is the hilltop farm. The final new farm type is the wilderness farm, and um, it's very monster-centric, but during the day it doesn't appear too much different than a regular farm. 
It's got lots of good space and pretty normal, um, nice open areas to farm with. That's the path to Robins and the mountains up there. And then you have your mushroom cave or your bat cave. You have plenty of room on both sides of your greenhouse to farm. And uh, Grandpa Shrine is buried back here behind this tree, so I'll chop it down so you can actually see it. So there's Grandpa Shrine revealed to us. And um, this whole area could actually be pretty good farmland. I mean, there's a lot of good farmland on this this map, but it does come at the cost of at nighttime, monsters will come out. So most of your stuff will need to be done during the daytime. Unless you have a weapon and uh, or aren't scared of the monsters. <laughs> but there's lots of good farmland. It's pretty much all surrounding this one really giant pond in the middle. So you have some fishing opportunities there, and you have lots of good farmland. Down towards the bottom, you also have some additional water. So you wouldn't need a water supply on this one either. There's plenty of water to grab to refill your watering can. And if we keep going down, you'll see that there is a pathway to Robins under Cinderset Forest down there as well. And uh, you'll just notice the swath of land. Like, there's plenty of room here to do whatever it is that you wanted to do. There's a little bit of grass on the edges, but for the most part, it is all farmable land. And that's pretty much the uh, the gist of Wilderness Farm, so if you're looking for big farming opportunities and lots of open space, this is a good choice for you. However, when nighttime falls, you'll see monsters like this pop up out of the ground and try to attack you. And uh, they're not very fast moving, but you can see in the early game when you don't have a weapon, they can be pretty difficult to take down. So I'm just smacking them with my scythe and um, only doing like one to three damage. And so it'll take a long time to kill these monsters. So you just want to keep that in mind that uh, nighttime can be pretty dangerous in the early game on the wilderness farm. So if you're brave, go for it. <laughs> if not, definitely choose something else. So thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and follow me on Twitch, all at Red Lace Gaming. I'm live on Twitch weekdays starting at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. And you can also visit my website, redlacegaming.com, where you can download the free Indie Guide to Stardew Valley, as well as the free Indie Guide to Starbound. So please check that out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.